preparing and is going to the final four. The following is a Learfield presentation of the Oregon Sports Network. And Oregon is going to play in the national championship game. This is Duck Insider. We need to get community. We need this thing to be bigger than just our little circle of players and coaches. Are you kidding me? Touchdown, Oregon! With two seconds on the clock, he hits it! That's the bigger picture in this thing. Allowing the community to celebrate the hard work, blue collar mentality this group brings to the table. And the Ducks have won it! The Ducks have won! We get to struggle together, and we get to have joy together. The Ducks are Pac-12 champions! champions. I am so proud right now to be the head coach of Oregon. Oregon's a Fiesta Bowl champion in a 12-win season. This is Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Presented by On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Now let's go live to the Country Financial Studio to talk Oregon Duck Athletics. We have a Pat studio and a Pat show today on Duck Insider. I'm Ryan Milano. We're holding it down here in the Country Financial Studio. We've got a whole lot to talk about. Oregon Football Pro Day going on today. We'll break that down on the show tomorrow. Oregon men's basketball, Pac-12 season honors. Those have come down from the league office. We'll get those later in the show. It's Oregon baseball game day coming up against Portland. That's 5 o'clock today. We'll preview that matchup. I'll be over at PK park later tonight coach missy lombardi talked with knight uretsky earlier today we'll run that on the show and also some scheduling notes oregon men's golf was supposed to be in action today at the bandon dunes championship but due to inclement weather that championship has been postponed and canceled and oregon will be back in action coming up for the Duck Invitational and Eugene Country Club coming up later in the month. All of that coming up later, but right now it is Athletic Director Tuesday. Ryan Milano sitting down with Damon Merkerson. Damon, how are you? Doing great, man. Doing great. Great to see you. How are you? I am absolutely fantastic. You brought some friends, and I want you to introduce your friends to me. Well, you know, I, I, I don't know if I could do them justice, but I'm going to make the try. I'm going to make the attempt. So we have, you know, the greats. With us, one representing women in flight, the one and only Sam. And then we have a stellar scholar athlete on the e board of our SAT committee representing the women of Oregon, Livy. So we've got Sam Berman, Livy Moore here. And so for for newcomers into the studio, we have a tradition. And each of you is going to get your opportunity. But the first time in, Damon, you remember what you had to do your first time in. I do, I do. A two-minute life story. So it we have a contest. There's a leaderboard over there, the closest to two minutes. We don't play Price is Right rules. You can go over. But the two-minute life story, Sam, we'll start with you, and then we'll go to Livy next. But Sam... Two minutes, your life story. You can start whenever you want. I've got the stopwatch ready. All right, I'm ready to go. All right, perfect. Hi, I'm Sam, born and raised in Portland, Oregon. Uh, lived in Portland till I was 16 years old. And then when I was 16, I moved to Shanghai, China for my parents' jobs with Nike. Graduated uh, from high school in Shanghai from Shanghai American School, Pudong. Always knew I wanted to come back and be a duck. And then my freshman year, my hallmate was a walk-on on the beach volleyball team and said, hey, do you want to be a beach volleyball manager? Had never played volleyball before. I played rugby and was a competitive swimmer for 10 years. Did a little softball here and there. And I was like, sure, why not? Found myself raking sand and putting up a beach volleyball net in the winter here in Oregon. Beautiful weather. Absolutely loved it. Worked really hard and then went over and uh, was a part of the indoor volleyball team as a student manager. Learned an Italian-based coding mechanism program in five months, typically taking two years to learn. Worked really hard because I wanted to be a part of the Oregon volleyball team. Four years later, it was time for me to graduate and the coaching staff said, hold up, we want you to stay. So I said, I would love that. So I applied to get my uh, I applied for the Oregon MBA program with a specialization in sports business. Got into the program. Um, have been traveling with the team all six years while also getting my master's. And then last April, I started working with the Women in Flight program as the co coordinator. Um, I also work with Cami Wilson on acrobatics and tumbling, and we both are are the boots on the ground here in Eugene, r running Women in Flight here, and have absolutely loved it. And here here we are today. I graduate in June. 
um, super excited to pursue a career in sports and super excited for the future. And then I'm going to give a fun fact about me. I played basketball with LeBron James, and he told me I had swag. Mm, mm. Wow. Ah. That was a fantastic <laughs> time, by the way. 149. Mm. Woo, okay. That's really good. That's really good. That's what, pretty good. Hey, Liv, you've got a really tough act yes, to follow. Yeah, she killed that. I, I want to I break down so much of what you just talked about. But, but Livy, I mean, I, I'm almost sorry I made Sam go first. Yeah, <laughs> that's a hard act to follow. I, you're going to have to try, I, I think. But whenever you're ready, your two-minute life story. Okay. I was born outside of San, San Antonio, Texas. Um, and then my family, when I was about three, moved to Washington, a small town outside of Spokane called Deer Park, uh, where I grew up. I played a bunch of sports, soccer, did gymnastics, um, basketball. And then I kind of decided, you know, soccer is for me. And I kept playing that. Um, and then I went to high school in Deer Park. I committed to the University of Oregon my sophomore year of high high school. Um, haven't looked back since. Such a good decision. I love it here. Um, came here. I've just been playing soccer. My freshman year, I tore my ACL, um, but I got a red shirt season out of it. So I'll be here next year. And then I uh, got to play the full last season. Um, I joined the Women of Oregon subcommittee with SAC, and it's been really awesome to just get involved in um, with the sub, like with the SAC group as a whole, and then just uh, involved with Alex, who's my um, subcommittee, like my co-partner, basically. Um, and I don't think that's two minutes, but that pretty much catches you up to my life right now. <laughs> you did not get as close as Sam. <laughs> One ten <laughs> on the clock, so still a pretty a, okay. A, a okay, six, two still minute good. life story. Room for improvement. Next time you get on. It, the, we will. We have a leaderboard up there, and I, Sam, Sam, you almost cracked the leaderboard. Uh, the the bone. You were three seconds off of Bonix's time, which is on the leaderboard. You were you were right there. It was actually really uh, quite impressive uh, for both of you. And Sam, I want to talk about Shanghai. How did you end up in Shanghai, China? So my parents have worked for Nike since retired for almost twenty five years. Uh, always kind of an opportunity growing up for us to move overseas there for their job. Um, but then all of a sudden we were in, my mom and I, it was spring break of March of 2016. And we were in um, San Francisco and we were in Chinatown. And we went to a fortune teller. And the fortune teller said, something big is about to happen to you. Within 24 hours, my mom got the phone call that we had 48 hours to decide if we were moving overseas to Shanghai. Within the 48 hours, my parents said, let's do it. We're going to do this adventure as a family. We're going to get on that airplane. And within two to three months, I was in Shanghai, fully packed up our whole family. We brought our dog with us, and we were in China. Do you feel like you live your life with like that level of spontaneity where it's like, oh, well, we've got three days. Let's go to China. Now I do. When I was 16, I was like, hold up. I'm going to stay here in Portland I'm not going into my junior year, and now it's like you could put me on a flight tomorrow, and I will be there. So what brought you back? I mean, Oregon. I born and raised duck. Always knew I wanted to come back here. Athletics, the culture, the school spirit. I mean, for me, that was – I grew up coming to Oregon football games. I was the first in line with my mom at the Mashovsky Center for the March to Victory mm -hmm. and the last one to leave. Um, and so for me, I always knew I wanted to be a part of, a part of the campus and – the athletic department here, and so it was a no-brainer. So, Damon, it, it's Women's History Month. I, I want I want your perspective on why you felt like these two were the perfect two to bring in to help represent Oregon for this Women's History Month and help talk about it. Yeah, I appreciate the question. Um, two leaders, right? Two leaders in a lot of the initiatives and programs that we've done, you know, throughout the year. Um, you know, one thing about from our DEI to Women in Flight to uh, the, the work that the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, or SAC, does is it's all year round, right? It's all year round. There are, there are some, while we like to put some emphasis and bring some more attention during these celebra celebration months, um, these two have been at the forefront of, you know, all that programming that has taken place since we got back in campus in the fall. So I, I, I could talk about it, but, you know, it's best to let the experts do the talking. So that's why I brought them here. Absolutely. And one of the events that recently just went on was the Women's Symposium. Both of you were involved in sort of the planning and the coordination of it. So what went into that planning? And Livy, we can start with you. What went into it? And then how did you guys work together in, in order to make that event happen? Yeah, of course. So I think Alex and I, my co-chair, um, she plays for what the women's lacrosse team, but 
Uh, we started planning this event back in September, and we wanted to start off with a theme, and we thought, what better way to do it than Boss Women? Um, and then in the past, it's been more of a networking event, but we kind of wanted to hone in on boss women and what it means to be a boss in life and in business. So we stuck with three speakers. We had um, Christina Newland, uh, Jess von Stock. Laura von Stockhausen and Jess Sutz Gilbert, um, and they came in and they really brought that vision to life for us. Um, and we wouldn't have been able to do that without the help of Women in Flight, too. It was such a good event and it was really awesome. Yeah, and then on the Women in Flight front, awesome to work with Katie Harbert, um, Alex, and Livy on this event, and Cami Wilson, like I said, on acrobatics and tumbling. Um, we worked we worked with Alex and Livy to put this event on, and we really worked on the on um, we give a student we give each student athlete who's in attendance a gift, and this year we gave them a Women in Flight notebook. So you know when you're going into a business meeting, a class, or or an important meeting of that matter, it's that opportunity to represent Women in Flight with a branded notebook with our uh, sponsored Toyota on the back as well and then we also did LinkedIn headshots which were awesome you know it's awesome to have a professional headshot that you can use when applying for jobs or just on various applications kind of you name it um, and then we also helped with the brochures for the event um, talking about the guest speakers and kind of the order that the day was going to go. So I want to ask you about women in flight. How do you interact with the student athletes? How do you get players like Livy involved and, and other athletes involved in, in what you're doing at women in flight? Yeah, great question. So to start off the year this year, we went to the women in flight team. We went to every single female sports program and met with each team to introduce ourselves, who we were, what we do. And it was awesome. We were able um, to give each student athlete a custom women in flight Stanley tumbler, Stanley Duke tumbler with the women in flight logo engraved on it and attached to that was a one pager about women in flight with um, Lexi Cami and I's information contact information on there really urging our student athletes to reach out if they want to get involved um, whether that's through storytelling various events that we host the women's symposium national girls and women in sports day uh, Oregon does a ton for our female student athletes so we're just really showing them we want you to be involved with our program um, and from there we had a ton of great student athletes reach out um, actually one of them we had in studio Katie Keogh who told her story um, who, who we featured in November for carcinoid cancer awareness month and her telling her story um, which has been absolutely incredible and we just recently launched a teamworks group chat for our female student athletes to get involved with where, where we're pushing various events women in flight themed games um, international women's day i mean this month is just we're celebrating international women's day and so pushing out various events that we're having through that platform as well uh, livy i want you to talk about sort of how you got involved what what was the process between stepping on campus and then where you're at now in terms of your involvement with your sack and women in flight and all of that yeah for sure so i think my freshman year i got to go to the title nine event um it was at uh, one of the baseball facilities, um, and I went with my teammate, and I just walked in, and I remember being like, this is this is really cool. Like, this is something that I definitely want to be a part of, and I wasn't sure how to go about that or how I was going to get involved with that. Um, but then I attended SAC, and at the end of the year, they go through who, like, new nominations for um, the subcommittees, and one of them was Women of Oregon, where you work closely with Women in Flight. Um, and I thought, wow, that's something that I would really like to do. So I applied, um, and I got the part, and it's just been awesome like I've got to be involved with Sam and talk with Cami and like getting to see a different side of that program from behind the scenes is super cool and something I'm definitely looking forward to continue to be a part of. There's been so much that has already gone on to start off this Women's History Month. There's so much that is still going to go on, and we're actually going to get to that after we take a quick timeout. So we're taking a break on Duck Insider, and then when we come back, there's still so much that's going on with Women in Flight, Women's History Month, and, and so much more. We're touching on it on Duck Insider next on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Imagine all the fun you can have this spring break in a new Toyota. I'm having fun and I'm not even there. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Dealer inventory may vary. See your participating Toyota dealer for details. Event ends April 1st. As a local community credit union founded by teachers, On Point is committed to supporting the students and faculty at the University of Oregon. And on game day, we're right there with you on the field, in the bleachers, and in the classrooms. Drop by your local branch today and discover the many ways OnPoint can help support your financial well-being. 
On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Imagine all the fun you can have this spring break in a new Toyota. I'm having fun and I'm not even there. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Dealer inventory may vary. See your participating Toyota dealer for details. Event ends April 1st. Your daily dose of Oregon athletics. This is Duck Insider from Learfield. This is your captain. We are going to be experiencing some slight turbulence. Please fasten your... Oh, hold on. Just got a video of my cat. Imagine the pilot of an airplane was as confident as you are texting and driving. Seems kind of crazy when you put it like that. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council into the building for the first time after the shooting. It was crippling, but it had to be preserved. In response to the Pulse nightclub shooting that affected the LGBTQ community, Barbara Poma, owner of Pulse, founded the One Pulse Foundation to honor Pulse victims and survivors. If you're an ally of this community, speak out. There are more of us together than apart. It is the power of love in its rawest form. Join the fight for LGBTQ acceptance. Learn how at lovehasnolabels.com. Brought to you by Love Has No Labels and the Ad Council. Back here on Duck Insider in the Country Financial Studio, I'm Ryan Milano, joined by Damon Mergerson, Livy Moore, Sam Berman, all here. And hey, we're celebrating Women's History Month, but Damon, we just got out of Black History Month, so I want to have you recap what were some of the initiatives and, and what did Oregon do for Black History Month and what did, what did we get out of that month? Yeah, it was a, a lot of collaboration. You know, campus had some great initiatives going on. So as an athletic department, we definitely wanted to support and, you know, elevate what they were doing. Uh, so we kicked the mo- month off with a collaborative event called Soul Food Sunday. It was an opportunity for all athletic staff members, students, and staff to come together and just learn a little bit about Black History Month. Uh, we opened it up to campus as well. So we had a collaborative, a uh, little educational, good uh, sharing of food, some music, and just community building. You know, um, So that's how we kicked the month off. Had some other educational events taking place. Uh, some barbershop talks. We did a little series discussing the history of barbershops within the black community as well as um, a hair history, right? We talked about locks and what that history has meant and what the challenges have been, you know, for uh, uh, people that identify as black with the United States. So it was really informative, man. It was really good community building. And um, like I said, I, I always measure events by how well we can really involve, you know, the campus because we're a part of the campus and um, we do some of our best work there. And you felt like you did a good job of that? I, I think so. I hope so. I mean, I'm still here. So, you know, <laughs> I measure my, my my success by if I'm not let go. So, you know, I feel like I'm doing a pretty, pretty decent job, you know? <laughs> Last week, it was uh, National Women's Day, International Women's Day. And, mm-hmm. Sam, you were over at softball over the weekend. And you got to throw out the first pitch for International mm-hmm. Women's Day. What was that like? Oh, my gosh. That w- it was the biggest honor. And I'm so proud to represent women in flight and women here at the university and to have that honor to throw out the first pitch. When I first got the email, I was like, no brainer. You know, I would absolutely love that. And again, just super proud to wear a woman in flight on my chest and, and, and represent out there. So coming up uh, throughout the rest of this month is going to be some B Oregon uh, games for both baseball, softball, uh, lacrosse. That's theirs at the beginning of next month. So, Damon, what what are these B Oregon games uh, about, and, and what are we celebrating whenever it is a B Oregon game? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. You know, B Oregon is you know our, our athletic department's call to action for all ducks to be the most authentic self, right? So this initiative started out as a way to celebrate you know the uniqueness of each team, right? The uniqueness of our department. So what? How we uh, design these games are very, very specific and personalized to whatever the team wants to talk about. So these both baseball and softball are just going to really highlight, you know, what being authentic means to themselves. And then you'll you'll see some videos, you'll see some educational sessions that really go into detail what authenticity means, you know, for them as a team. 
Um, it's it's all ran and led by the student athletes, so it's student driven and student centered. So you'll you'll see again, like I said, you'll see some videos, you'll see some educational um, sessions being played on via social media, and even programming and events taking place throughout the week. How different is that from team to team? How unique is is a certain group from another, and how much is it similar from? different teams here at Oregon. Yeah, we, they're all, they follow the five pillars of B Oregon, which is uh, diversity, respect, inclusion, voice, uh, and education. So that's where the crossover happens. But in terms of the theme, I mean, it, it really depends on what the team is passionate about. You know, volleyball, for example, when the fires that were happening in Hawaii, they really wanted to spend time talking about Hawaiian culture, right? Obviously, they raised money for the, um, the people over in Hawaii. Um, so that's the that's the approach they took. You know, the men's basketball team wanted to talk about Black History Month, right? Their their games happened during that his, during that month, so they wanted to put some emphasis on what that means to them as a team and celebrating their teammates. Um, so it, it really, you know, sometimes it's simply following the month. Sometimes, you know, what's going on in society. I think Bjorgen allows us uh, and allows the athletes to have some engaging, uh, timeful conversation. And, um, and and it, and show that and express that in the means of events, right? Bring attention to it through events. Livy, you're an athlete. You play on the soccer team. But what was the B Oregon game like for you earlier this year? And how do you like when the B Oregon game comes about? What, what does it mean to you when these B Oregon games come around? I think it's just really an awesome experience to learn more about your teammates. You know, we are in the locker room constantly with each other, but... I really think the B Oregon games, the past two years I've been here, I've learned something new about somebody on my team, and it really just brings you close together. Um, and it's just a way to celebrate, like, how the different backgrounds that we come from and all the things that, like, make us who we are and the people that we are and the way that we are. So, honestly, it's, like, one of my favorite games to be a part of and just the conversations we have beforehand because, like Damon said, we really get to decide what we want as a team. And so I think that's just a really cool experience. I think it's incredibly cool. And what else is incredibly cool is it's been a decade of Women in Flight. We're celebrating 10 years of Women in Flight. Sam, what are we doing for 10 years of Women in Flight? And what does it mean that now it's been around for, for this long? Oh, my gosh, it's incredible to celebrate 10 years of this program here and you know kicking off the kicking off earlier earlier this past year we met with the University of Texas North Carolina UCLA schools that are wanting to implement programs like women in flight into their school which was just such an honor and so incredible to represent Oregon and talking to these big name schools who want to follow in our footsteps and you know coming up 10 years in the spring and throughout 2024 um, we're really going to kick off the celebration um, with a uh, alumni giving campaign so really really uh, touching on our alumni and reaching out to them and doing a lot of outreach uh, so alumni uh, stay tuned women in flight team will will be in contact soon and then hopefully maybe planning something for the spring or early next year as the students come back to campus um, to kick off next year's school year how can fans continue to be engaged and how can they continue to play a part in the growth of women in flight as it continues to move forward? One thing I think we take a ton of pride in, one is our women in flight games. We just had two over this past weekend, softball and lacrosse, and then we have acrobatics and tumbling this Saturday. Tennis is the 29th, and then beach volleyball is the 9th. So coming out to those games and supporting our female student athletes and getting the opportunity to learn more about women in flight at these events um, and at these games and really, really getting to see the student athletes firsthand and how incredible and talented they are. And also at these events, we have an opportunity to sign up for our monthly newsletter. And in that newsletter, we're constantly pushing information about women in flight, uh, what's going on on campus this month, what each team has accomplished, and each one is unique to that month. So we just, uh, our, la our latest one was highlighting the women's symposium um, and what our female student athletes are up to. Damon, what's also coming up later in this year is going to be the NCAA Inclusion Forum. What is that? What is that event about? Just, just catch fans up with what that NCAA Inclusion Forum is, is going to accomplish. Sure. The NCAA is constantly doing, you know, development and career, career development, professional development opportunities for staff and student athletes alike. In this forum, you know, people in my role across the nation uh, come and have conversations and trainings about how we can better improve and enhance the student athlete experience, uh, sharing best practices. And this year, they implemented a new part, portion of that. They actually implemented a student athlete symposium to go and uh, coincide with the, the staff uh, inclusion form. So, we got a we got a, a special one going out there with me this year. Livy was selected out of uh, 20 uh, in the Division One category. So they're taking 60 total 
20 each division. And though, and so if you think about that, Livy is one of 20 of about 300 possibilities. So, you know, through her work with Women of Oregon uh, on the SAC committee, you know, it's, it's really special that she was selected to, you know, take part in this trip. So, Livy, what was that like? What, what was sort of the process of being chosen as one of those 20? And why, why did you want to be one of those 20 that was going to end up at this NCAA inclusion forum? Yeah, it's actually funny. I think I got out of class one day and Damon was like, hey, call me, Livy. I have something for you. And I was like, OK, I picked up the phone, called him. And he's like, look, I think we're going to put your name in for this inclusion forum. I think it'd be a really awesome opportunity. Would you be interested? Um, and I definitely was like, okay, well, when is it? Like when, like, <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, I have spring season here, but then the dates worked out and I was like, yeah, put my name down. Like, I think this is an awesome opportunity. Something I've never done before out of my comfort zone. Like I do really enjoy challenging myself. So um, I think after that, I got an email and then filled out a form and then, uh, Damo was like, yeah, you got it, and so we're going in March. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. There's there's so much that, that we've covered celebrating Women's History Month today. Uh, is there anything else from all three of you that, that you want to touch on before uh, before we let you guys go? Great. I think Cover, You covered so, it all, yeah, but yeah. you did a great job. Let's give you a hand. Let me yes. give, you, give you a hand for covering all that. <laughs> well well, well oh, that's done. All you guys. That's <laughs> all you guys. No, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, Damon, Livy, Sam doing a fantastic job. We're going to step aside on Duck Insider, and then we're going to come back breaking down some Oregon softball. Mrs. Lombardi had a conversation with Knight Uretsky earlier today. We're going to that next on Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Hey Duck fans, we're all about protecting our home turf here in Eugene. You should do the same for your home with Country Financial Insurance. Most home insurance doesn't account for inflation, but with Country Financial, yours can. If something happens to your home, make sure you can rebuild the same house in the same place. Call a local representative or 866-COUNTRY and get a solid defense for your home. Home insurance policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Casualty Insurance Company, or Country Preferred Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. Property must meet aging condition requirements, which vary by state. At Shadow Hills Country Club, we're more than just an award-winning golf course and practice facility. Our events team offers all-inclusive event pricing that allows us to take care of all the details while you enjoy your event. Our indoor and outdoor venues offer you a wide variety of fully staffed options that put the focus on you. From weddings to business and social events, at Shadow Hills Country Club Events Center, you get the benefits of a resort atmosphere and amenities in a peaceful country setting. Just minutes from downtown Eugene. Call for a tour today or visit Shadow Hills Events. Com. You're listening to Duck Insider. Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. I'm Chris Jackamick. I served in the United States Air Force and I've deployed three times. So in 2017, I was serving as an Air Force First Sergeant. Our motto in that role is my job is people, everyone is my business. But unfortunately in that year, I would lose my own brother, Lance Corporal Adam Jackamick, to suicide. The majority of veteran suicides are from guns. I store my weapons securely, not only for myself, but for my family. Store all your guns securely. Help stop suicide. My service never stops. Brought to you by End Family Fire and the Ad Council. Babes, what are you doing? What? I'm just mowing the lawn. No, it's blazing hot and dry out here. Don't you remember? Smokey Bear says. Avoid using power equipment when it's windy or dry. Where'd you learn this? Oh, it's on SmokeyBear.com with many other wildfire prevention tips. Right. Thanks, honey bear. Because remember, only you can prevent wildfires. Brought to you by the USDA Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Welcome back inside the Country Financial Studio. It's Duck Insider brought to you by On Point Community Credit Union. What a great conversation that we just had with Damon, Sam, Livy, breaking it all down for Women's History Month and, and Women in Flight. What, what a great job uh, that was just done there by the trio of them. Uh, earlier today, what a great job by Knight Uretsky. Came in, recorded an interview with Coach Lombardi, fresh off of a series win to open Pac-12 play against California. Knight Uretsky sitting down with Coach Lombardi. Here's their conversation. 
Coming weekend, three games against the Utes, a Utes team that made it to the College World Series a year ago. 3 p.m., 11 a.m., and 10 a.m. Friday, Saturday, Sunday against the Utes. All three games will be on the Pac-12 live stream, as well as KWVA, me, myself, and Aiden Hess will be making the trip out to Salt Lake City this upcoming weekend. Uh, Coach, 2-1 and one this past weekend. Uh, what were your biggest takeaways against a ranked Cal team? I think my, my biggest takeaway is just not getting what we wanted in the first game and having to come right back 30 minutes later and let that game go and, and compete and get the win in game two. Yeah, game number two, obviously that exciting finish, Valerie Wong. I do have to ask you, so like for myself as a broadcaster, I see Val make contact, and I see the ball heading towards the ground, and when it finally hits the ground, I'm losing my mind. What's it like for you in the dugout being a coach, seeing her make contact, and then finally that moment when the ball hits the ground? It's awesome, awesome. Like you, you see how hard she works and the time that she puts in it and just our team, you know, continuing uh, pushing the game into extra innings and then just her coming up clutch. Uh, we were all so pumped, ecstatic, uh, just couldn't say enough. Like, we celebrated. Absolutely. And really what led to her being able to come up in that opportunity was great pitching from Taylor Spencer, the young freshman, in some big moments right there. Uh, what did you like out of her in those big opportunities? I just thought she seized the moment. Um, you know, she just did whatever she needed to do to give us and put us in a position to, to win the ball game, to extend innings, and, and – give us time and um she she did that she has so much energy so much fire on the mound these guys love playing behind her talk to me a little bit about what it was like to recruit her because I know like in football it, or in college athletics at least it's widely covered but in softball not as much what was it like for you to identify identify her as a recruit and then also what was it like when you knew oh yeah we got a good one I think just, you know, what you see on the mound um, from her, like people are just starting to get familiar with her and the type of energy and the competitor that she is. But that's what that's what made us want her to be a duck is just watching her compete on the mound. Like she's always had that energy. So just seeing it now, you know, at the college level. But she's a competitor. Um, the moment doesn't get too big for her. Um, she wants to be the best. Uh, she's got a great work ethic. So I'm excited with what she's doing. I'm definitely excited as well. She's been one of my favorites this season. On the other side, you also had uh, Morgan Scott and Elisa Kolsky adding some good innings in games number two and three, helped to pick up those wins. Uh, what was it like for them to get out there and get some good innings behind them? Uh, great. I think one thing is that we, we've got a deep pitching staff, and you need to have a deep pitching, spas, uh, a deep pitching staff, especially to compete in the pack. And with them, they give us opportunity. Every game, they give us opportunity to win the ball game, along with our defense, who's been phenomenal. You think of those two things, they give us opportunity, and that's what you need. I wanted to talk a little bit about that defense. So defense, currently third in the country, top in the Pac-12. How big of an emphasis was that coming into the season, and how has it paid off so far? We've always talked about defense wins championships, and you just think about um, – it allowing our pitchers to exhale a little bit and not feel like they have to be perfect or that they have to do it all themselves. You know, we will gladly take their strikeouts, but then from there, let your defense work behind you. And um, our, our pitchers have definitely embraced that. Our defense, they're excellent at what they do. Um, I just I think of some of the double play balls that we had this weekend. I think of some big outs at the plate um, by our outfield and, and throwing runners out at third um, and, and getting them out of scoring position or, or you know, eliminating base runners from our outfielders. Uh, sometimes you're lucky if you get maybe one play in a game and for them to have multiple plays and, and get the job done was pretty awesome to watch. There certainly was a lot of highlight reel plays from the defense this past weekend. Is there one that just sticks out to you, you think? <sighs> Gosh, I um, gosh, there's a couple. I think of Alyssa Daniel, the bunt down the line, and she just threw a laser to get the runner out at first, and then from there the runner kept going to third, and KK came up and threw it to Katie Flannery, and you know eliminated uh, eliminated a base runner being in scoring position and and got us out of the inning. So I think of that. Um, I think of um, Ariel. Um, throwing that runner out at third. I think of Kai throwing runners out at the plate. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot. That's that def that offense. They're you know they can swing it, and so we really needed our defense to step up. And I thought they did a great job. They absolutely did. And you mentioned Katie Flannery. She started and completed her first game as an Oregon Duck. She also got her first hit. How special was that for her? 
Uh, really special, you know, like she's come up this year and has hit some balls hard and right at people. And, you know, you're just like, gosh, like, let's see her get a break here. She's been swigging well and, and to finally get, sometimes you just get that first hit and you just get to exhale and just, and you just get to play. Another duck that had a big hit was Emma Kauf. It seems mm -hmm. like she's starting to get going. The transfer from Georgia Tech uh, had her first home run as an Oregon Duck. What have you liked from her and her swing as it's progressed into this point? Same thing. I think she just needed to settle in a little bit. She's got a sweet lefty swing. She's got good power. She spreads the field. Um, I always talk to her that she does – she does enough. Like, if it's a ball that she can barrel, she absolutely barrels. But if it's not, then she knows how to do enough um, with with spreading the field. You know, maybe hitting a ball up the middle or oppo. And um, I just uh, think she's just got a great swing. Continuing with the batting success, Kylie Shar at the top mm -hmm. of the order. Uh, obviously, speed has been a big story this season, but she's currently leading the Pac-12 in stolen bases. Uh, what have you liked from her in that leadoff spot and her ability to take a single to a double based on her speed? Yeah, I love what Kai's doing. Kai just really understands, like, uh, each one of her bats, how she needs to go about it, the pitcher she's going to face, what she wants to do. Um, I think she's another one that doesn't too much. She just knows – how to do enough and um, that enough is it's it's really really good so um, she's such a table setter for us she gets on base she steals and then it's for us to be, have the opportunity to drive her in mm. one of the ways that you were able to drive her in this weekend was the suicide squeeze yeah. with Alyssa Daniel second time we've seen that from her how big is that that you have a batter that normally bats three or four just laying down a bunt and sacrificing herself for a run I think it's great I think it shows you know just um List willing to do whatever it takes to score runs, whether it's it's barreling something up or or sque you know going to the squeeze, and it just shows her athleticism as well as a hitter. What about the other players that are, were involved with small ball? It seems like you guys were running all over the bases. It seems like you guys can really wreak havoc with the speed this season. Definitely, definitely. It's you know we could take singles and turn them into doubles. Um, we it, our speed gives us opportunity to get our. Um, to position ourselves in scoring position and not maybe necessarily have to give up an out by sacrificing somebody over. Additionally, I just kind of wanted to hit on the pitching one more time. As a staff, you guys have been doing a great job in limiting the walks this season. What's really led to the success in just pounding the zone and limiting the walks this season? I, I think just that. I think pounding the zone. And, uh, you know, when you, f I think, really know – the type of defense that you have behind you, it gives you more confidence to pound the zone. And I think that's exactly that. Like, we've got such a great defense. Um, I want them to go right at these hitters. And then from there, get your strike out. If not, let them put the ball in play and let your defense take care of it. Awesome, Coach. Well, the one thing I do want to leave you on is Utah this upcoming weekend. What do you remember about the series last year and what's going to be the key to success this upcoming weekend against the Utes team that made it to the Women's College World Series last season? I remember last year that season was uh, that series was a tough series for us. We didn't get exactly what we wanted out of that series at all, and so I, I look at that as us having some unfinished business going into this year's series. So I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Congratulations on the wins this weekend. Thank you. That is Knight Uretsky's conversation with Missy Lombardi this morning ahead of the series against Utah, starting on the road in Salt Lake City Friday at 3 o'clock, Saturday at 11 a.m., and then Sunday at 10 a.m., those all Pacific times. Knight Uretsky will be making the trip for KWVA. He will have the call. You know, also will be there, the players, including one of the pitchers, Morgan Scott. She spoke with the media after the weekend against Cal. Here is Morgan Scott post game on Saturday. Um, I think it was a lot different than yesterday. I think I had more command. My ball was moving a lot more, and I just knew I wasn't going to let them in. Was there anything different about today that resulted in that change in command? Um, I had a conversation with Coach Lombardi for the game. We watched some film. I moved like my stride just a little bit, for, but for the most part, it was just the same old, same old. The, I mean, technically, maybe it was the same old, same old, but... Mm -hmm. You had the swagger. I mean, it was beast mode. That was, it was there. This was different, Morgan, than definitely yesterday, but I don't think I've really seen it this, this season so far. Is there a different mindset going into it, or is it just, like you said, you were just, it wasn't going to happen again? I think just the practice beforehand, we talked about, like, letting go of the stats previously. It was just a clean slate. So that was my main thing, just 
especially like the main thing I wanted to like get better at was like the extra base hits, the hits on 0-2, 1-2. Um, I think just being ready for any moment, I think that really helped me a lot today. One thing, you coming into this, this team, mm -hmm. it was a completely different role than what you'd had previously. You know, transitioning from being a starter to kind of being ready at a moment's notice you know, and you are, but what, what is that mindset and how does that, how do you work that so that you're ready to go whenever, instead of knowing going into it all the time that, you know, this is my game. Now it's, I'm going to be ready all the time. Right. Um, I think even times last year, it was like that in similar cases. Um, pack, I definitely, I started more games than I have now, even though it's been one series, but I think just being ready to go no matter what, just keeping that same mentality and knowing like what I have is going to work, even if it's not that be the best that day, as long as I have my other stuff, I'm still going to be dominant. How do you lock back in after you give up? Like, you give up a homer, mm -hmm. but that was like pretty much the only only damage they're doing on you. How do you how do you stay keep focus and stuff when you give up a run like that? Um, my whole mentality this year, because it is my last year, is I don't care, basically. Um, it doesn't matter. It wasn't going to affect anything that I was doing at that point. Kind of going back to his question, how is like your method of attack against like their middle of the order, knowing like the amount of power they possess? Um, I think just going with my best stuff because any day I believe in that over anything. What do you feel like is your best stuff? Um, right now, definitely um, my curveball and off speed, especially um, my changeups finally coming back. So that's been nice. But I'm majority of a rise ball pitcher, but even like this weekend, I've thrown a couple drop balls, which has been really nice. <laughs> What's the, the mood of the team? I know game one, you know, you guys have flushed that. You didn't have time to really process it anyway, but right. I mean, forgetting that game, this was a pretty solid outing these, these last two games preparing going into the rest of the season. Right. Um, I think everyone's just ecstatic to be here. And I think going out, if we keep bringing it the way we are, I think we have a really high shot of taking pack this year. Confidence from Morgan Scott and deserved confidence taking down a ranked opponent in the first series of Pac-12 play where Oregon was able to win games two and three against the Bears as the Ducks were able to take the opening series in conference. Now Oregon going on the road to Utah coming up this weekend against the team that was in the Women's College World Series. Going to be a tough series for Oregon, but the Ducks have shown that they are up to the challenge in Pac-12 play. It's going to be a tough series for Utah going up against Oregon, too. All right, we're going to take a timeout. It is baseball game day. Oregon against Portland. Also some men's basketball accolades for three different Ducks. That's what's coming up next on Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Imagine all the fun you can have this spring break in a new Toyota. I'm having fun, and I'm not even there. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Dealer inventory may vary. See your participating Toyota dealer for details. Event ends April 1st. As a local community credit union founded by teachers, OnPoint is committed to supporting the students and faculty at the University of Oregon. And on game day, we're right there with you. On the field, in the bleachers, and in the classrooms. Drop by our local branch today and discover the many ways OnPoint can help support your financial well-being. On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Imagine all the fun you can have this spring break in a new Toyota. I'm having fun and I'm not even there. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Dealer inventory may vary. See your participating Toyota dealer for details. Event ends April 1st. This is Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Wouldn't it be great if life came with a remote control? You know, you could hit pause when you needed to, or hit rewind, like that time you knocked down that wasp's nest. Well, life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome, but pre-diabetes does. With early diagnosis and a few healthy changes, you can stop pre-diabetes before it leads to type 2 diabetes. To learn your risk, take the one-minute test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre-diabetes awareness partners. When might you be buzzed? When you suddenly love everything. You guys, I love this song. I love these nachos. I love our kickball league. Ugh! 
I love this guy. What's your name? You know what I'd love? A ride when it's time to head out. If you see a buzzed warning sign, call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. I love your car. Is this real leather? Welcome back inside the Country Financial Studio. It is Duck Insider brought to you by On Point Community Credit Union. We're talking about a whole bunch of diamond sports as we're entering into the spring season, which means the basketball regular season has concluded, and that means a whole bunch of Ducks are being honored for their play throughout the regular season. For the second year in a row, and Folly Dante has made the All-Pac-12 first team. And Folly Dante, the first duck with consecutive first-team appearances since Dylan Brooks did it in 2016 and 2017. And Folly Dante also named to the Pac-12 defensive team for the Pac-12. And Dante on the year, average career bests across the board. 15.4 points per game on 67% from the field. Really 68% if you like to round. 8.9 rebounds per game. 1.9 blocks per game. A steal and a half. An assist and a half. And played 30 plus minutes per game even though he was banged up to start the season and missed a lot of the non-conference sl- non-conference slate. Seven double-doubles in just 17 games played for Infali Dante, including three straight to close out the regular season. And Dante, on the defensive end, blocked a shot or more in every game except for two and recorded at least a steal in 13 different games and multiple steals in seven. That earns him Pac-12 first team and Pac-12 defensive team. Jermaine Kuznar got named to an all-Pac-12 team, the second team for Kuznar, who started all 31 games for Oregon this year, notched a team-high 15.5 points per game, 4.5 rebounds, 2.9 assists, and 1.6 steals. He had 26 double-digit scoring outings this season, including five 20-point games and a 39-point performance against Arizona last week it was the first it was the most points scored by an Oregon player since Luke Jackson scored 40 back in 2004 so the most for a duck in 20 years Jermaine Kuznard last week that earns him on the Pac-12 second team and Jackson Shellstead he gets honors on the all Pac-12 freshman team as he averages 12.7 points per game in his first year with the Ducks on 46% from the field three assists 2.7 rebounds per game he started the last 25 games in a row for the Ducks and finished with the third highest assist to turn turnover ratio in the conference at 1.31. He recorded four 20-point games and a career-high 23 points against Colorado earlier this week. The Colorado and Utah games where he combined for 35 points between the Mountain Schools earned Jackson Shellstead Pac-12 Freshman of the Week honors last week for that March 11th week and against the Mountain Schools for Oregon men's basketball as they closed out the season. So congratulations to Folly Dante, Jermaine Kuznard, and Jackson Shellstad, who all got all Pac-12 honors with Dante getting first team and defensive team. It is also game day for Oregon baseball going up against Portland. The Ducks kicking off a long double-digit road stand, 11 games straight going to be played at PK Park, starting off with this game against Portland. It's the ninth game in 12 days for Oregon baseball, and the Ducks, they've showcased that they have a ton of depth in their pitching staff going up against Portland coming up today, and they showcased it last week where the Ducks were on the road, a 4-1 and one road trip for Oregon with the midweek wins against Grand Canyon on Tuesday and Wednesday of last week, and the Pac-12 opening win against ASU with wins on Saturday and Sunday. Coach Wazikowski was talked about asked about the weekend after the series last weekend and well here was his response a really good win today you know a tough ball club uh, on the road at Arizona State never easy to win in the desert really proud of the team got some good relief work uh, today 
Um, it's just really proud of the, the effort that the guys uh, put out there. You know, ants and arrows, the hustle plays, the, the catching by Bennett Thompson, obviously the, the grand slam by Jacob Walsh was a deal breaker. Uh, but even the spacing afterwards with ants and arrows hitting a, a home run at the end, Logan Mercado coming back after Friday where, where you know, we got walked off. He pitched well on Friday as well, but uh, then he really pitched good today at a relief. And it was just good to see the entire team, the real quality effort. A uh, good week, wraps up uh, five games week where we went four and one on the road so really proud of the, the guys that I coach are a bunch of bunch of grinders these guys are, are a bunch of tough kids grinders that's the word that coach Wazikowski used and I think that that is a perfectly apt word for the way that Oregon was able to battle through really the entire week the Ducks were down in every single game that week against GCU in the first two games, Oregon came back and completely gapped the Antelopes in both of those midweek games. And then Oregon down in the ninth inning on Saturday, down to their final two outs. Jeffrey Hurd hit an opposite way home run to give Oregon a 5-4 to four lead. Maddox Maloney drove in one more in his first career at bat, which gave Oregon a 6-4 to four lead and win over the Sun Devils on Saturday, and then on Sunday, Oregon was down early once again. It was a 2 nothing deficit for the Ducks, and then with one swing of the bat, Jacob Walsh flipped it from a two-run deficit to a two-run lead for Oregon, a lead that the Ducks would never relinquish, ended up taking the game 8-5 to five in the rubber match against Arizona State last weekend against ASU. The Ducks, that game was on Sunday, so... Travel day after the game, off day for Oregon baseball yesterday, and then they're right back into game action today. 5 o'clock against Portland. I'll have the pregame show starting at 4.45 on the Oregon Sports Network. That's where I'm going right after this, right across the street over to PK. That is what's coming up for Oregon baseball today as the Ducks face off against the Pilots. we got to get to one more timeout, but we're sticking with the Diamond, jumping back to softball. Kai Shar. She's had a pretty productive season to start. She spoke with the media after the game on Saturday. We'll hear from Oregon Speedster next on Duck and Side on the Oregon Sports Network from Wearfield. As a local community credit union founded by teachers, On Point is committed to supporting the students and faculty at the University of Oregon. And on game day, we're right there with you on the field, in the bleachers, and in the classrooms. Drop by your local branch today and discover the many ways On Point can help support your financial well-being. On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Hey, Duck fans. We're all about protecting our home turf here in Eugene. You should do the same for your home with Country Financial Insurance. Most home insurance doesn't account for inflation, but with Country Financial, yours can. If something happens to your home, make sure you can rebuild the same house in the same place. Call a local representative or 866-COUNTRY and get a solid defense for your home. Home insurance policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Casualty Insurance Company, or Country Preferred Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. Property must meet aging condition requirements, which vary by state. More Duck Insider coming up on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. When you're high, you feel different. You think different, you talk different, you draw different, you listen to music different, but you probably knew that. Problem is, you also drive different, and not in a good way. That's why driving high is illegal everywhere. So if you're high, just don't drive. Make a plan to get a sober ride. Because if you feel different, you drive different. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. Sometimes I just cannot believe all the storms we've gone through here. I can only hope that we'll be able to leave this house to you one day, baby. You're our legacy. Planning for these disasters will make sure we're safe. And it's the best way to protect that legacy. Protect your legacy. Visit ready.gov forward slash plan for the tools and tips you need to start your emergency preparedness plan today. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council.
We're back on Duck Insider here in the Country Financial Studio. Duck Insider brought to you by On Point Community Credit Union. Ryan Milano here with you. And we've already talked about Oregon softball and their win over the weekend against Cal and their preview against Utah from Coach Lombardi. We heard from Oregon Scott. Well, now it's time to run Kyle Ushar. And Oregon's run Kyle Ushar a lot this year. 20 times, 16 stolen bags this season. Well, it's our time to run her interview after Saturday's win for the Ducks. Here is the speedster. Kai, you got a chance to do what you do best, create chaos, getting on the bases, and then using your speed, you know, exploiting your speed and scoring runs. How does it feel to basically do what you do, knowing that they're, knowing you're going to do it and you're still doing it anyway? It's really fun. Like, you can just tell the other team gets nervous when most of our team gets on base because we all create chaos. Um, Coach Martyr, too. That steal was all on her, and that was really fun. That was really cool. You've had more stolen bases this season than last year, and you're approaching equaling your last two years combined. Was that something that you were trying to work on for this year, is improving your stolen bases for the season? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the beginning of the year, it was my goal to get a certain amount of stolen bases, and um, we're getting there. <laughs> so. What is that goal? 35. 35. Yeah, I don't really notice, but like each game, I just I want to get one stolen base a game. That's my goal. Normally, you're the one at the top of the lineup setting the table for everyone else. But how does your approach change when you're you have other runners on base and you're trying to drive them in? Um, it doesn't change very much. Most of the time, I just pick a spot on the field and like aim for that spot. Or um, like if I'm doing a bounce, I have a spot that I'm aiming for. So. So you're actively like aiming, choosing and aiming for different spots when you're coming up to the plate? Yeah. You also got a chance to show off your defensive attributes. I mean, you gunned that one in, you know, and explain your thought process going out there after you've done, you know, a great job on defense and then you get a chance to come up and continue it on offense. Yeah. Um, uh, we worked on defense so much as a team recently and I feel like it's all coming together, every aspect for the Ducks. And uh, it just feels good to, having like a good throw. You don't get very many opportunities to do that. So coming up, it just gives you a little bit more confidence too. That is Kylu Shar for Oregon Softball. Ducks on the diamond as softball. They'll play next week on the road, rather this weekend coming up on the road against Utah. Oregon baseball, they're in action today against Portland. 5 o'clock at PK Park, 4.45 is the pregame show. I'll have it for you on the Oregon Sports Network. That's where I'm going right after this. I'm going over to PK. And it's going to be a great day to call some baseball. Also, Oregon Pro Day today. A whole bunch of ducks out on the practice facility showcasing their skills, scouts there, and interviews. Those are all coming up tomorrow on the show. It's basically an all football day with baseball post game coming up. That is what is in store. Also, reminder, no show on Thursday. There is a show tomorrow. Have a good one, everybody. Go Ducks. Hi, I'm Danica Patrick. Watching my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing, but not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. This breaks my heart, and it's something that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and gives it to 